very broad, uh, but I'm enjoying so far, and I've been learning quite a lot. So, uh, what we are doing today in Brazil, uh, this is one of the piece, uh, one of the pod projects that uh, my group is doing. And uh, basically, I'm, we focus on chromatin structure to understand the basic of uh, how the chromatin can fold and also try to do some more applied um, sides of the chromatin. So um, I start to say that the chromatin is the ma major regulator of gene expression, general maintenance. Um, for those that doesn't remember about chromatin, this is the nucleosome. This was the first structure published in 1997. And, and here you can see uh, the DNA rolling up with the octum, histone octum, uh, where we have uh, uh, A2A, A2B, A3, and 4. And here the, the other side, you can see that's 1.7 turn on this octum. Uh, basically, this uh, interacts with uh, a tetramer of A3 and H4 and a dimer of A2A and A2B. Uh, so, and the nucleosome is the basic unit of the chromatin, is a rep repetitive unit of the chromatin. So here we have uh, three nucleosomes, it's a small chromatin, a small fiber, and uh, I'm representing here the readers, the er erasers, and the writers on the chromatin. What, what is this? These are enzymes that can deposit some chemical groups on chromatin, and this is going to have impact on chromatin. Uh, in other words, it means that this is able to open and close the chromatin, and that's why the chromatin is the major regulator of gene expression. For gene expression happens, it has to have access to the DNA. Protein has to, ha to come to the DNA and recruit a lot of other proteins and the basic machinery of, uh, of transcription. So here we have uh, the acetylated histone uh, at histone acetyltransferase that can deposit this uh, modification. And in this way, the chromatin is going to be open. Uh, this is another group of proteins uh, called um, recognized by this bromo domain that can just read this post-translation modification. And this is the erased, what means it, this H tag, histone, acetyl, uh, uh, histone diacetylase, can remove this, uh, this chemical group. In this way, when you remove this group, the chromatin is going to be more compacted. Uh, leading to a, a, a silence of genes. So uh, this is a very basic uh, slide where my intention is to show that nowadays we have a group of, pro uh, of uh, drugs called app drugs. This uh, emergent cl class of drugs that aims to control the epigenetic chains and has gene expression for disease treatment. Uh, maybe you have heard about uh, inhibitors of H tags, histone diacetylase, that is being very uh, helpful for uh, in oncology and uh, lots of uh, other diseases, like uh, a psychiatric disease. And these drugs have a direct impact on chromatin architecture. So, uh, taking a look at what we have, what we have in the cells, uh, the basic um, uh, uh, molecules inside the cells that could be candidate for receptors, drug receptors, we have these four uh, types of molecules, polysaccharides, lipids, nucleic acid, and proteins. This too, it's hard to consider as a receptor because uh, of course it's very abundant and uh, there's no specificity in terms of, uh, of um, actions. So we still have this nucleic acid, DNA and RNA, one example is the cyclophosphamide that is still in use in oncology. Amazingly, it's still used in oncology because it's very inespecific, but for uh, terminal patients, uh, it's still very helpful. And uh, of course, the most uh, interest kind of molecule to be a drug target it are proteins, uh, and different kind of proteins, glyco and uh, and uh, uh, lipid proteins. 
So in here, what we are considering is the nucleosome as a, a new receptor. What means that we are looking at the nucleosome as a drug receptor. And the nucleosome, as I just showed, is a complex of protein and DNA. So what we did first, uh, first we are just looking at the surface and having a look in the proteins that interact with the DNA. Here is a, a map of the structure, uh, electrostract, electrostract map in the uh, uh, surface of the nucleosome. This is a very acid region in the nucleosome. And amazingly, uh, this region is important for lots of uh, uh, protein interaction. It means it's protein that comes to the uh, to the nucleus and has some effects on trans uh, as a transcription factor and uh, as a, 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 a recruiter of lots of other proteins to open the chromatin going to interact in this region. But beside this has other piece of the of the nucleosome that also is important for interaction of other proteins. Now nowadays we have seven uh, crystallographic structures where, uh, where it has been shown this in atomic details how these proteins can interact with, with the nucleosome surface. In here uh, we map all these interactions and by color uh, the outcome of these interactions. It means if the proteins interact in this region it's going to be more relaxed. The chromatin is going to be more relaxed and more open. It means it's going to be more active. If it the, uh, the proteins interact in this region in black, it it's going to lead to compaction. It means uh, to gene silence. So uh, what we did, uh, what we are doing, is considering the nucleosome as a, a simple uh, protein in terms of uh, 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 drug receptor. So uh, here is just a simple dynamic equilibrium where we have a peptide and uh, plus uh, the nucleosome. So if it goes to the right, if we're going to have the complex. If it goes to the, uh, and of course, this depends on the concentration. So this is a very classic uh, way to show the drug receptor interaction. So uh, what we are bathing is if you have some peptides that can interaction can interact with uh, the nucleosome surface, specifically in this piece here, the acidic patch, this is going to compete out lots of other proteins that are going to interfere with chromatin compaction. So um, now we are start to do uh, in silico design for different proteins that can interact with this region and other regions in the nucleosome surface. Here's just a design uh, how these proteins have been doing. Uh, actually, not proteins, but uh, uh, nucleosome bind molecules. Uh, it means mostly we are working with uh, PEP mimics. We design in f at first some peptides that are going to have uh, some binding in this region and also with the DNA. I'm going to show uh, uh, a bit later. Uh, but the, the intention is first to have some peptides, some models, and then from this we start to, to design other molecules that are going to have a high and low of or low affinity for this region here and different regions that are going to impact in the, the chromatin architecture. Uh, so what did we did first was uh, have a look in different structure. This uh, was one uh, the first structure, uh, complex structure, with the nucleosome, with a peptide, with LANA. LANA is an uh, uh, antigenic peptide from um, a virus, or sarcoma virus. And this, this peptide interacts in, in this region. SIR3, it's another protein that's important for the chromatin modulation in fungus. And more recently, uh, four years ago, there was the first structure uh, published with the whole protein complex with the nucleosome. This is uh, uh, RCC1, a chromatin remodeling protein. And here I show to you how this can 
interact with the nucleosome. So we basically pick up lots of uh, uh, different structures and saw how does it fit with the DNA and chose uh, with the nucleosome and chose the best ones in terms of fitting. We've used some programs. If someone is interested, I can talk to you uh, uh, later about this. And uh, we figured out that RCC1 would be the best candidate uh, because it has a better fit on the nucleosome. Here's where I can uh, uh, we show that has two uh, parts in this interaction, not just on the histone, but also with the DNA. So what we did, uh, what we are doing, here's the nucleosome again. Uh, it's a, a, uh, showing the, the surface of the nucleosome, the lateral uh, 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 view. This is uh, the acidic patch. Uh, this is the region that I mentioned earlier about uh, uh, showing this, this specific interaction uh, that would be the spe specific region where this protein can interact uh, uh, with the nucleosome. Uh, if you come and see how this can move and this specific interaction, this is the RCC1, that interaction with the acidic patch, but not only with the acidic patch. That's this piece that can interact also with the DNA. So what we did is we pick up these two pieces and made a link here to the first peptide. We call GEMIP1, this first peptide. So uh, basically, at the moment, we are, we are working with this model to get lots of different nucleosome bind molecules and design nucleosome uh, uh, binding peptides, in fact, pep mimics, that are going to have some action on chromatin uh, architecture. So to try the first, uh, uh, if our first in silico peptides uh, can have some effect on the, on the chromatin, we basically reconstitute the chromatin in vitro. So how does it work? So I got the, some uh, DNA arrays, it's a 601, where it has this DNA has a strong position for octoma. Uh, this octoma is extracted from chicken erythrocyte and also a competitor just to, to avoid some, some uh, super saturation. So basically I put this together, I put in a dialysis tube and I, I come from two molar salt because I need to be in two molar salt to get the octoma together and then dialyze slowly to get the mononucleosome or to get long chromatin fibers. So depending on the array, I'm going to have... Uh, X nucleosomes. I can have uh, from 15 to 61 uh, nucleosomes, I mean long fibers or short fibers or just mononucleosomes. So we did this and firstly we work with just the mononucleosome, we label the peptide that we designed in silico and here I show to you the binding of, the mon uh, uh, of this peptide we call GEMIP1, this first peptide based on this, uh, on this structure with RCC1 and in different concentrations. And we, we could see that, okay, that's fine. The first design uh, molecule, uh, peptide, that we did in silico is working well. It's binding perfectly to the nucleosome. We're very happy with this, uh, f with this first, first uh, 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 assay. Okay, now we can move on. We did lots of biochemistry on this, so I, will I will not show to you now. And then the question, okay, in vitro, everything is working perfectly. The theory is, is great. But how does it work in the cell? So for this, we did some, some um, cell-based assay. And first, we showed that uh, GEMIP1, this peptide, can inhibit cell viability and proliferation. We use different uh, type of cells, and we saw the same result. OK, so GEMIP1 has an effect in the cell. Uh, in terms of proliferation. So this stop the, the growth of this cell. It's not stop the pro proliferation of this kind of cells. Uh, but we, we were very surprised to be a, a peptide that you just put in the, in the cell culture and is working. Uh, so, and then we, we did some uh, assays to check how these peptides can work on gene expression. We first 
try the TNF alpha. And this, uh, I think, was uh, 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 very well discussed in, in several talks here. Uh, and TNF alpha is an uh, inflammatory marker. So we decided to work with first with the TNF alpha. And we saw that, okay, JMIP1 can decrease the expression of, of uh, TNF uh, alpha. But it was uh, a great result in terms of promising for us to keep going and believe that this strategy can work. So here I use also as a control a LANA, this peptide that uh, 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 interacts with, with the acidic patch of the nucleosome. And we saw also that this decreased uh, the expression of TNF alpha, what was great to see as well. So basically, what we have now are some biochemical assays, actually lots of biochemical assays in vitro studies. Uh, based, uh, started with in silico uh, designing peptides and pep mimics, and some assays showing that in, in cell-based assays showing that these peptides can act in the cells. But we still have the question: Okay, these results that we are seeing here in cells are due to the action of these peptides directly in the nucleosome surface, or this is interaction of proteins uh, uh, around the uh, uh, membrane, uh, plasma membrane, or just uh, enter in the cell and interfere with all the mechanisms that we don't know. So for this, we are at the bottleneck of this work now, is to prove that this peptide, these new molecules that we are designing, actually this, uh, uh, this was the first one, but now we have a, a, a library of 1,000 peptides, actually pep mimics, and then we are trying all this, this, this peptide to see how this, does it behave. And uh, the idea is to label the, uh, this, this uh, nucleosome binding molecules and see in the confocal microscopy how does it interact in, with the, uh, in the cells. Hopefully we're gonna see this attaching to the chromatin and hopefully we can see that this is modulating the chromatin architecture. So in, at conclusion, what we have until now is the, the design peptides and pep mimics actually uh, binds to the monoclosomes in vitro and does not affect its stability. This was, I uh, didn't show, but we have uh, different assays to, to say this. Uh, JMIP1 inhibits cell proliferation and viability and JMIP1 repressed TNF of expression induced by uh, LPS. Uh, so the perspectives at the moment is can we use nucleosome binding molecules for modulate chromatin architecture in vivo? So that's, uh, as I said, the bottleneck of this work is to show uh, how these molecules are acting in the cell. Because uh, my, my fear is that these peptides that just enter in the cell has been squelching by some enzymes that is giving, this, uh, giving us this, this positive results. But in fact, if it is happening, it would not be that bad because we just prove, okay, this kind of molecule also can interfere with activity of different enzymes, what would be quite nice as well to see. Uh, and the other question in terms of perspective, is it possible to use nucleosome bind molecules as a therapeutic target? We believe so, and that's we are betting. And that's what brought me to start this, this uh, uh, spin-off, this startup, Nucleo Santos Therapeutics, uh, founded by myself and my wife, Daniela, that is, uh, uh, who is also a professor in the mathematics department. I hope that you're gonna help us with the financing. Uh, so I stopped here, and I thank you very much for the attention and all the, the funding agency and the laboratory of molecular pharmacology where I am at the moment in Brazil, in Brasilia. Uh, Ellen Bill, this is uh, a lab in Campinas, Sao Paulo. CAPES and CNPq are our, our, uh, the na uh, Brazilian uh, agency funding, and also this laboratory that is helping us with the uh, computational biology. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, hope you're gonna have time to visit us in Brasilia. This, uh, I'm biased, I was born there. So I love that city in terms of uh, when we return from, uh, I return from, from my studies uh, here in Europe. After nine years, we are about to decide, okay, we're gonna return to Brazil. So, but wh wh where we are going? And uh, okay, Brazilian or the coast? 
And at the end, my, my wife and myself and my little one, okay, there's no doubt, let's return to Brasilia. <laughs> and I hope we're gonna have the opportunity to come and visit us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. We have time for one or two questions. So perhaps you can move a little bit better. I can see yeah, you, thank sorry. you. Um, no, very interesting presentation. Um, I have a bit of a problem to understand your concept of that being therapeutically applicable because as you convincingly showed, the nucleosome is one of the uh, general, one of the major elements of gene expression. So even if you can demonstrate that your peptides, peptide uh, will generate or affect gene expression of an enormous number of genes, and presumably if you have, would have done an array study with your TNF assay, LPS, you would have seen uh, not only TNF, but all sorts of other proteins going up and down. So uh, can you uh, explain a little bit more why you think this general mechanism of uh, gene expression alteration could be therapeutically relevant? Yep, no, this, uh, thank you for this question. This is a very important question. It's at the end, uh, how specific is this going to be? Uh, at the moment, I'm not thinking in to be very specific in terms of local chromatin structure. Uh, but also, I think we have to consider the concentration. As I mentioned, the equilibrium uh, reaction, uh, there's lots of proteins that are going to interact with, with that region. So the idea would be, so depend on the concentration, we're going to compete out this protein that are going to pact or not. So, for example, in cancer, we have lots of uh, 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 different local uh, regions on the chromatin that it's open and lots of uh, in in the cell in the nucleus lots of different regions that are going to be packed so it and the chromatin is highly dynamic so if we, we put something there depend on the concentration this is going to lead to the compaction or to the open of the chromatin but the the idea of the next step actually of this this uh, large library, library that we are building is to pick up some specific modification, post-translation modifications that happens on the nucleosome surface. And then we can be more specific in terms of what is happening in, in, in certain states uh, in the cell. Okay, let's say that there's some disease, again, let's think in cancer. And, and this specific gene is highly expressed. So what happened in this local chromatin that contain this, this gene? Okay, this is, has uh, post translation modification X and Z. Okay, now it's possible to design something specifically that's going to recognize this specific modification. So that's our, our, our thing and our hope that's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you. And in relation to this, uh, have you have a thought about possible mechanisms of, of uh, delivery and targeting? Uh yeah, that's another question because uh, I see first when I ask my PhD student, okay, now it's time to, to, to check this in the cells. And it's this sort of a, what, put a peptide in the, in the cell culture and how does it, okay, come on. Look, these peptides, they are uh, highly basic peptides. They have to interact with the SIG patch. Uh, okay, so if, if they are highly basic, there's a class of peptides called cell penetrating peptides that just per se this going to be uh, uh, this going to penetrate in the cell. So um, so at the end, okay, let's put and see. And amazingly, this happening, we had uh, uh, we have seen some effect. But it's still the question, okay, if the peptide enter in the cell. It's gonna be it probably going to be degra degraded very fast because, I mean, we have a machinery inside the cell to try to avoid this kind of contamination. And, okay, so the strategy then would be let's build some peptides that has some modifications that will avoid this kind of degradation. So this pep mimics that I'm, I'm telling you is just a modification that we are doing, put a hydrocarbon a bound and fixing them in a specific uh, conformation, like like alpha helix, 
and uh, we, if we put it in a, uh, as a half a helix and fix in, the, uh, 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 in this position, the peptide is going to enter in the cell. This was described uh, sort of uh, four years ago. Uh, and this peptide is going to enter in the cell. The enzymes will not uh, degrade them, and this is going to be fine. But, I mean, later, how this is going to be delivered in terms of, uh, of uh, as a drug, we are st I still have to try. At the moment, actually, yes, I got an email, and uh, one of the things that we're struggling is with money. So this was one of the reasons that I created this startup. Okay, I need money to keep going. We and uh, Brazilian economic situation now, it's terrible. We don't have money for nothing. So, so how to do... Pardon? Even with football, it's, it's going badly now. <laughs> I think it's, it's changed. It's, it's, uh, oh. Anyway. Uh, yes. Uh, well, hopefully we're going to get some money also with the Olympics. Uh, but the idea the in the future, uh, actually very near future, uh, I was mentioned, the email that I got yesterday was uh, my chemist collaborated, mentioned, okay, now we have uh, lots of peptides. We were able to to synthesize these peptides, we are going for the pep mimics. So now we have tons of pep of peptides, and I hope in, in a month we're gonna have tons of pep mimics. So now we're gonna try in vivo. What means uh, get rats, poor rats, <laughs> and get some models of cancer and just inject them and how and see how does it uh, 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 how it gonna behave. But uh, for humans in the near future. I'm saying about uh, six to seven years, we still have to, to play with. How does it going to be delivery? Okay. A any other burning questions? One more. Uh, buenos dias. Thank buenos you. Dias. Thank you. Bu muchas gracias for an excellent talk. Oh, thank you. Um, I've heard as a clinician that there are people using vector viruses to introduce things for like gene therapy and all that sort of stuff. Do you think you're, you're using, you will in the future be looking at that? Because in terms of patient acceptability, most patients will be scared out the door. The mention of, you mentioned something about anything related to viruses. So is there any way you, you can think of in terms of delivery, what other methods you can use apart from? Yeah, you know? uh, at, at the beginning we thought about just, uh, okay, let's get some, some, uh, some plasmid and transfect the cells with this, uh, the gene and see how does it behave. And in fact, we have some results from this, this first crystallography structure that put together with uh, some in vivo studies. And they have done this and they saw the results. But to work with this is quite tricky uh, still in terms of a uh, 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 therapeutic strategy at the end. Uh, but I mean, I'm not excluding this. Uh, at the moment, what I'm trying to see is the effect of this molecule per se in the cells. In case we have some, some effects, some specific molecules that are gonna be a great candidate, and then we're gonna try everything from virals uh, to just plasmids and see how does it behave. I remember reading, so I can't remember which article, that there was an idea of using plants as vaccines. To use? A plant, plant material. Right. Yeah, plant material, you know, like, fruit or something to introduce vaccines. And I thought that would be a really nice thing. I wouldn't want to inflict oh, pain on my, nice. my poor I'd like patients. To see that. Yeah. <laughs> children. Do you, is there any possibility of using something perceived as natural to help delivery of any future therapeutic targets oh, yeah. that you might have? As, uh, as I mentioned, I mean, we, are, uh, we are trying to, to prove the concept at the moment. Um, this, this, uh, 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 this idea came from these app drugs. When I thought about this, okay, let's consider not just acting on enzymes that promote uh, post translation modifications that are going to affect the chromatin structure. Let's think di in direct molecules that can act on the nucleosome surface to, to try to modulate the chromatin architecture, and consequently, the gene expression, general maintenance. But uh, we are at this stage, in a b very basic stage, for get money for my company. I have to pass th through these. It means to prove that the peptide is acting in the cell and has this effect. Uh, for investors, they say, okay, that's a nice idea, this blah, 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 but I want to see this peptide interaction 
in this in vivo. So now I have two students working hardly on that, and we are trying to label the peptide. We are labeling the pe peptide and try to see in the confo uh, microscopic confoco confoco microscopy. So, uh, but yes, I mean, I'm gonna be very very pleased in thinking in how to deliver this to the cells in the next few years, and hopefully it's it gonna work. Can I make a suggestion you try the uh, Belinda and Bill Gates Foundation for funding? Yes, actually I thought about this. Have a uh, about it. And, uh, Thank you. Uh, and uh, I, I, I wrote about six months ago, there was a round in the Bill and Melinda Gates, and I was very happy and this and that. I wrote, and okay, that's the last minute. And when I had a look in the round, actually I got the, the, the wrong round. The, the round that was for this kind of, of issue, has done the six months ago. Oh gosh, I can't believe. <laughs> so I missed the first, I mean, this round. So I'm expecting the next one to, to see how this is going to work. Oh, thank you. You can report upon it next year if there's success. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you. Let me give you a, an award. There you go. Recognize the Thank you. Let's give it a